Good morning. Today is Sunday. It is Lamed Nisan, the 30th day of Nisan, which means it's Reish Chaydesh, the first day of Chaydesh year. So good morning, good Chaydesh. Today is uh, last night we counted the 15th day of the Omer. And um, today we're gonna what we're gonna do, being that Friday we had a technical problem in the last five minutes, we didn't have the audio, so we're going to repeat from the last five minutes of Friday. Then we're going to do the Shabbos class and today's class as well. But um, I want to start with a story that I heard uh, just this morning, early in the morning. As we speak, there is online a Fabrengen, an unbelievable 24-hour live Fabrengen from people from all over the world, Shluchim, and other people that join in and bring about the Rebbe's message of the 28th, 28th day of Nisan. When the Rebbe said 31 years ago on this day that I basically, the Rebbe said, I finished everything what I could do and I leave everything up to you. And ever since then, we try and to figure out what does we what do we need, what is it that we need to do? And the Rebbe says what, what we should do is to bring Mashiach, figure out how to bring Mashiach. And obviously, there is the Rebbe's continue to speak about how to do it, to study the Torah, especially about Mashiach, and also about doing the mitzvahs and so on and everything. So so constantly there is for bringing. So I want to share with you one story I heard this morning from Rabbi Dudu Leader. Shliach of the Israelis in Melbourne, Australia. And he said it was once uh, on Hanukkah. In, mid- in midnight, he goes to visit there in Melbourne. Hanukkah is the middle of the summer. He goes to visit one of the bars and he finds an Israeli young man sitting there, very down, looks very down, very deep. And he goes in, goes over to him, Chak Sameach, how are you? What's going on? Apparently, that man a few weeks earlier lost his brother in a terrorist attack in Be'er Sheva in Israel. And later on, a couple of weeks after this, both his other brother and his father both committed suicide because they couldn't, they couldn't take it. You can only imagine how this man felt. And he, he decided to run away in the furthest place and he came to Melbourne, Australia. So the Shliach invited him home. He started speaking to him and encouraged them. Then he invited him for Shabbos, invited them for dinners. And uh, he started learning with him, Hasidus, learned with him, Tanya, other things. Slowly, slowly the man became, he, he started feeling better, started understanding more, and he started observing little by little, and he started to connect. And then one day, the, they have a Fabrengen, Fabrengen, the gathering, the Shliach is there, the Rabbi is there, and this young man was also there. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the Fabrengen, the guy st- gets up and he says, Rabbi, you guys are robbers. He's looking at him. Robbers, what are you talking about? He says, you guys have so much. You have a Rebbe. You have the teaching of Hasidus. You have all the good stuff. You are robbers. You're robbing so many people from this knowledge. Why don't you market this thing? And this guy had a background in, in, in business. He was market, marketing. He was very an expert in marketing. He says, you have a good product. You got to market it. You guys are not doing it. Rabbi tells him this. You know what? Tell me. Give me advice. You're an expert in marketing. Tell me how to market it. He says, I'm going to get back to you. A few days later, later it comes back. And he says, Rabbi, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. He says, why? So he says, you know, I'm an expert in marketing. And in marketing, you know one thing. 
the people love people love pleasure. That's one thing. The other thing is people don't want to work for it. They want to get it easy. So he tells them that's how people that's a company's market. Coca-Cola markets in, in, in Hebrew they say the Tama Chaim, the taste of life. The market you have, you want a taste of life, you want a pleasure? Easy, just drink a cup of Coca-Cola. But it says, when I realized what you guys have, yes, it is a great pleasure. It is a great pleasure and joy to have what you have. But it doesn't come easy. Not like Coca-Cola. You drink it up and you have everything. You have to work for it. And that is something you cannot market. So this is really an introduction to what we're going to learn today. That the Alter Rebbe in the Tanya, in today's lesson, yesterday's lesson, is guiding us and is teaching us how we can achieve the love to Hashem. And he says that there are two types of love. There is Ahava Rabba, love that comes from above. Spiritual love like tzaddikim, righteous people have. And there is the Ahava Olam, the love that when you recognize that really everything comes from Hashem, the world comes from Hashem. And then he says that there are also type of love that combines them both. And this is what he says, he calls it the love of nafshi iviticha. You say to God, God, you are my soul. I desire you. This is when you recognize that you really just a person loves his life. Person loves his life. But when does he feel that he loves his life? When he's about to when he feels that he's about to lose it, or when he feels that he's, it's weakened, all of a sudden he feels, oh, I need to live. I, do, I have to do everything to live. When you recognize, when you realize that Hashem is our life, then that will develop the love to Hashem. But that's not easy. How do we achieve it? It's not a cup of cola. That we need to work, and that's what Alter Rebbe is going to explain today. So let's look inside. What we stopped on Friday. Says the Alter Rebbe, Ach ach asiyah ava klula mikol b'china yisim madrigo yisah ava rabba b'ava soilo v'yishova l'chol nefesh m'yisrael v'yirusha l'ona m'aveseinu. Yet, yet, there is one singular and unique love which incorporates something of all the, distinct, the distinctions and gradations of both Ava Rabba, the love that comes from above, and Ava Tolam, the love that comes from the worldly things, and is found equally in every Jewish soul as our inheritance from our patriarchs. We have an inheritance and explains the Ainu Mashakosava Zayar al Posuk Nafshi Ivisiko Balaila. And that is what the Zohar says on the verse, my soul, I desire you at night. We explained this on Friday, what it means that my soul, I desire you at night. Seems grammatically incorrect. If you should say my soul desires you or I desire you. Here it says my soul, I desire you at night. And it and explains that we read it like this. My soul, comma, he's talking to Hashem. He says, God, you are my soul, and I desire you at night. What is at night? As we'll soon see, when it's weakened, when you feel that the weakness of the, of the life, we desire it more. Says the Alter Rebbe, the Yachim lekut shabrich urechim nuset de nafsha verucho, kemo de izdap kon ilen begufe vergufe, rochim loin vechulum. One should love God with a love of the soul and the spirit as they are attached to the body and the body loves them. This is the interpretation of the verse. My soul, I desire you, which means, it says, which means, since you, God, are my true soul and life, therefore I desire you. Pirush, 
שאני מסבא וסוי ולחוק כאודם המסבא לחיי נפשי, וכשהוא חלש ומעונה מסבא וסוי, שתושב נפשי יהיה לו. That is to say, I long and yearn for you like a man who craves life of his soul, and when he is weak and exhausted, he longs and yearns for his soul to revive him, literally to return to him, the, the soul to return to him. And the same thing says, Alta Vechen Keshoi Lechlishoim, Misava Vechofet Shetoshev Nafshei Eilov Keshei Eyo Mishnasoi. Likewise, when he goes to sleep, he longs and yearns for his soul to be restored to him when he awakes from, when he awakens from the sleep. Says, so do I long and yearn to draw within me the infinite light of the blessed in Sof of Hashem of God. The life of the life of true life. Through engaging, through engaging in the study of the Torah, when I awaken during the night from my sleep, because the Torah and the Holy One, blessed be He, are one and the same. That we explained earlier, that the Torah and God is one and the same. The boy Barnash Mir Chemusa, the Kutcha Bricha, the Meka Mecholayla, the Shtadla Bapochone at Safre. So the Zoya says, that out of love of the Holy One, blessed be He, a man should rise each night and exert himself in his service until the morning. This is a custom that people used to do. Very few individuals do it today also. They wake up in the middle of the night, and that's how they start the day. In the middle of the night, they pray to Hashem for the destruction of the temple, and then they study Torah until the morning. Continues the Alter Rebbe, I'm going to continue now. And yesterday's lesson, the lesson for Saturday, Shabbat, the 29th of Nisan. And here the Alter Rebbe says, now this is one type of love. One type of love, we said, is the love that you realize that Hashem is your life. So just like you love your life, you love God. Now this is Dalta Rebbe, there is even a higher level of love. A higher level of love that is called like a child loves his parents. And here you can ask the question, who do you love more, yourself or your parents? I know this question, I'm going to get many different answers. But you can argue and say that, yes, of course, everybody loves himself. But there's an argument to say that you love your parents more than you love yourself, in a way. And the proof is that people will give up their life when we, let's say, a father, a mother is, is, is in danger. You would go and risk your life, knowing your life is, risk your own life to go save them, to save them from captivity. We see it happening now. And, and uh, so this is something, because sometimes there is the inner, deeper love to the, to the parents. And the same way says the Alter Rebbe, there is a higher love, loving God, not because of what is good for you, but reaching a level of love to God because I love Hashem because it's for Him. I want to do Him joy. I want to do Him pleasure, even if it's not about me. That's a much, much greater love. And even this, as the Alta Rebbe, is something that can be achieved. And the Alta Rebbe is going, uh, going to explain how. So let's continue inside. So the Alta Rebbe, the Rabbi Gdoilu Mizu, a greater and more intense love than this, meaning than the love 
which results in realizing that God is one is one's true soul in life. What is the greater love? A love which is likewise concealed in every soul of Israel as an inheritance from our ancestors. In this is what it is written. It says in Rayemem that the part of the Zohar that it talks about Moses, the great level of his love. He says, Kibro de Ishtadel Bosaravui Veime, the Rochim Loin Yatir Migalme Venafshe Veruchi. This is like a son who strives for the sake of his father and mother, whom he loves even more than his own body and soul, than his own body, soul, and spirit, sacrificing his life for his father and mother, in order to redeem them from captivity. And Alter Rebbe explains, Ki aloi av echad lekulanu, for we have, we not all have one father. So therefore, when we realize that this is our father, then we will have this love to give our father in heaven more than what we do for ourselves. So the Alter Rebbe now is going to ask a question. He says, wait a second. Who are we kidding? Really? You think you love, you can develop such a love to Hashem, to God, in the level of Moses? Moses, I can understand, can reach that level. But how do we achieve? Is it real? Are we kidding anybody? So the Alter Rebbe says, we're not kidding anybody, it is real. And he explains why. So he says, Although, and although he says, one may ask, who is the man and where is he who would dare presume in his heart to approach and attain even a thousandth part of the degree of the love felt by Moses, the faithful shepherd. Says the Alter Rebbe, nevertheless, mikol makoim, arei efes kotzeyu v'shemetz mineyu merav tuivoy v'oiroy, meir lekolulus Yisrael b'chol doyo v'odoyo. Nevertheless, he says, a minute portion and particle of his great goodness and light illumines the community of Israel in each generation. And it is stated in Tikkunim in the Zohar that the emanation from him, from Moses, is present in every generation to illuminate them. So he says, yes, it is there. That is there. It's in there. It's concealed, but it's there. We have it from Moshe Rabbeinu. We have it from the Rebbe, the tzaddikim of the generations, that they give us, empower us with this special neshama. However, it's concealed, and we need to reveal it. It says, Only the glow from Moses' soul is present in the souls of all Israel in a manner of great obscurity and concealment. Now, in order to take it out, but to bring forth this hidden love from its latency and concealment to a state of revelation, so that it will be manifest in his heart and mind, that's not hard. That's not far. As he quotes the passage, the verse in the Torah, it is not beyond reach, nor is it far off. But it is very close to you, in your mouth and heart. Says the Alter Rebbe that in this verse we have the key. This verse gives us the key how to uncover, how to reveal, how to bring out this hidden love in us. 
And what is the key? The verse says it is close to you in your mouth and in your heart. It's not but simple. You have to practice. Practice this and talk about it. Talk about this love. Talk about the fact that Hashem is our soul. Talk about the fact that Hashem is our father. Talk about those things. When you verbalize it, you repeat it and you think about it and then you meditate about it. So important is to verbalize it and to think about it. And the practice makes perfect, as they say. The more you practice it, the more you do it, the more you will reveal that. Continues the Alter Rebbe. It says, that's what it means, the Hainu. That is to say, it should be habitual with his tongue and voice to arouse the intention of his heart and mind. Because the sound of a voice arouses the devout connection, concentration of heart and mind. That's why in the synagogues, you'll see people, when you pray, you don't just read, you verbalize it, you say it loud. When you say things verbally, it brings out the deepest feelings. So as to immerse his thoughts in the life of life, blessed be in Sof. Because he is literally our true father and the source of our life. And to awaken our love for him like the love of a son, of a love of, of a son for his father. These two types of loves. Understanding that God is our life and understanding that God is our father and just like a son does for his father. And when one accustoms himself to this continually, habit will become nature. That's what practice, and you, it becomes second nature. Okay, so this is the end of yesterday's class. So everything's understood, right? We practice and we get to love Hashem. So again, the Alter Rebbe asks, in today's class, is going to ask, but wait a second. But again, really? If you practice saying that Hashem is my life or Hashem is my father, automatically you're going to develop an open feeling. Your heart is going to be filled with love with Hashem. Again, who are we kidding? I understand I'm going to practice and do and feel it. But still, we are still humans. We are still physical beings. We still love our ice cream and steaks. To love, develop feelings to Hashem. That's a good question. And the Alter Rebbe is going to answer yes. The Alter Rebbe is going to say now that, yes, I know. I know that you cannot achieve on your own. But you know what? The thing here is, Think about what is the truth deep inside your heart, not in the revealed way. Is there a deep inside the heart, the love to Hashem? The answer is yes, because inside there is the Neshama. And on the other end of this line, is there, does, do you actually practice the following Hashem's order based on this feeling? And the answer is again, yes. I'm doing, I, I think about, I meditate about the greatness of Hashem. And I imagine that I have this real love. Let's say that this feeling is not a real feeling. It's just an imagination. But I have the imagination. And when it comes to practice, I do follow the, wor the words of Hashem. So in between, the only thing that is lacking, there is a gap. And the gap is about the revealed love. So Dalta Rebbe says, that's no big deal. 
You do your part. Being that is there is that the feeling is true, except that it's not. You don't feel it, and the, and it leads to the actual action that you follow Hashem's will. Hashem fills the gap and connects your thoughts to the actual action. I, I was thinking about a, a metaphor to and to explain this. Imagine, imagine someone is uh, is poor. A poor couple, they want to, they live, they eat, whatever they eat, and uh, whatever they can afford. And they always want to feel like, they want to feel like rich people. And they don't have it, but they're not, they couldn't, they couldn't make it. And then one day, the husband says to the wife, you know, honey, let's pretend. Let's pretend that today we are wealthy. We have millions of dollars. We're gonna to go to the most expensive restaurant. We play with credit card, and we're gonna enjoy a day. We're gonna enjoy a day like the most wealthy person on earth, and we can enjoy everything. And they go, and they have the feeling, and and they pretend. They pretend. Pretend that they are wealthy people. Uh, do they have the real feeling of a wealthy person? No, but they pretend. And they go and they eat in the restaurant. Who's going to pay the bill? Who knows? They cannot afford it. They're going to have to work for six months to afford it. But as soon as they finish the meal, someone tells them, hey, you know, your great uncle just passed away and he left you $50 million. So that day, they didn't know that they had this $50 million. So they had the pretending, the pretending, the feeling, acting like a like like a, a wealthy person. But then, and they and they the practice they did, and they enjoyed the life of a day like a wealthy person, and they enjoyed a nice restaurant. And then at the end of the day, that came true. So the feeling was real. It's just an example that I thought of, and and but the idea that here is that the Rebbe says. We do have hidden in our heart that love, except we don't feel it in the open. But when we do practice to think about this love and develop it more and more and to live that way, then Hashem elevates us and it connects us to us. So let's look inside in today's lesson of Sunday, the 30th day of Ashkadesh. Here, the first day of Rosh Chodesh, the 30th day of Nisan. Says the Alter Rebbe again, Even it, is, it appears to him at first sight that this is an illusion. It's not a real thing, the feeling of Hashem, says the Alter Rebbe, He needs not be concerned. Why? Because it is intrinsically the absolute truth by virtue of the hidden love. But the benefit derived from its emergence into open is that it should translate it into action. Which is, this means being occupied with the Torah and mitzvahs, which he studies and performs as a result of it. And why does he do it? With the intention of causing gratification to God, like a son serving his, his father. This is the second level of the love that he says what you're doing not for your own life but you're doing for your father you're giving everything for your father and that's what they say concerning this it was said that a good thought is joined by the holy one blessed be to a deed hashem joins the thought that you have and makes it as if you have the real feeling 
and and connects it to the deed to the action that you do. Providing it with the wings to soar upward, as explained earlier in chapter sixteen, Alter Rebbe explained that in order for the actions that we do should be connected to the higher worlds, connected to Hashem, it is when it's done through fear and love of Hashem. And here says Alter Rebbe that even though the fear is not real, it's not real fear, it's only you're, you're, you're thinking about it, Hashem combines it as if it's actually so. And what is the joy that you're giving to the Father, to, the, to Hashem? It says the Rebbe, there's two types of joy that Hashem derives from this action. The gratification he provides God is akin by way of illustration used earlier to the joy of a king whose son returns to him after liberation from captivity. Because when a child, when a, when, when, when a person, a human being, a Jew, comes and does what Hashem wants, is going out of the prison of captivity of this physical world that conceals and it's dark and it's dirty and you're connecting to Hashem. And what is the other thing? Or God's gratification may be from the fact that it has been made possible for him to have an habitation among mortals. As earlier mentioned, this is what Hashem wants, is to have a place where he can feel at home. He wants to have a home. He wants to dwell right here in this low world. So this is the, first, the, the higher level of love. And the same thing says the Alta Rebbe when it comes to the lower level of love, which is the love of I, my soul. God, you're my soul, and therefore I desire you. Is the same way. Even in regard to the above-mentioned love of the category of my soul, I desire you, and his galail, who is mentioned before, it is readily possible to bring it out of its concealment into the open. How? This is through constant practice with mouth and heart in full accord, so that one's heart should feel what his mouth utters about God's being his true life. So, but what if you cannot do it? What if you think and think Hashem is my life, but you cannot really feel in a physical, tangible way that you love Hashem and you want Hashem to be your life? Even though, However, if he cannot bring it into reveal into revealed state, this love, nevertheless, he can occupy himself because of this love in the Torah and mitzvahs for the, for their own sake. Through portraying the idea of this love in his mind. And a good thought is united by God. God unites the thought that you have with the actual action that you do. And therefore, even this love also Hashem makes it as if this is a real love. And this is the answer. And this is what we need to market. It's not easy to market it to a person. That you have to, we have to work hard to achieve. But when we work hard and we think about the benefits, what is it, the benefits that we live life, a meaningful life, a life of Torah, a life of God, even though we cannot achieve the real tangible feeling of love to God, nevertheless, that the more we think about it, the purer we become, and Hashem connects us, and Hashem elevates us. This is the end of the time you share. And let us all hope that the, the action that we do will bring us, that we will fulfill that what the Rebbe told us, tut als was you can't, you do everything what you can, and we 
will bring very soon Mashiach now. Amen. All the best.